Hello everyone and welcome back to my tutorial campaign in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul suite of Realism Mods for Kerbal Space Program. Now, as you saw in the last episode, if you saw the last episode, well, that's interesting, uh, let's zoom out and fix some of that Z-fighting, um, we successfully placed one probe <laughs> on course to encounter Mercury in 60 days. Uh, however, before that happens, we're going to launch our two probes that are supposed to go to Venus. So let's go ahead and look at Robin 1 on Pad 2. Now, the last episode we launched Robin 3 and Robin 4 before we actually got around to launching Robin 1 and Robin 2, um, because our Mercury window was actually earlier than the Venus window we had previously designed for. So that is why there's this interesting uh, configuration of numbers. Um, so, with any luck, we'll be on the pad shortly. There we go. So, this now is um, a fairly odd looking rocket, but it will serve. It has this big bulbous fairing at the top um, because it has those giant solar panels because we're basically sending the same design to Mars. Uh, although, by the time the Mars window comes up, let's be real, we're probably going to have better technology anyway. Uh, tech uh, electrics were already partway there so we can get rid of these big solar panels. 110 days to electrics being done. Mars isn't an for another three quarters of a year. So, anyway, let's go ahead and target the moon so we can launch into the plane of the moon. Uh, and I'm also going to futz around with There we go. I think this means I can never remember what icons do what. I'm actually kind of tempted to uh, yeah, let's just not have lines for now. There are too many lines. Um, so we targeted the moon. So let's go ahead and launch into plane of target. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this Venus alarm because we know we're in the Venus window. So we're launching a day early. Um, because we're going to go ahead and launch the second probe um, a day later because again we are launching into the plane of the moon and we get only one window to the moon a day. Two seconds to ignition, one second engine ignition. Up we go. Okay, let's fix our turn. That's all fine. program is started.
Not really sure why things are flickering at the moment. I apologize. Turn continuing. Got about a minute left on the first stage. Forty five seconds. almost a kilometer per second Earth-centric. Or at almost one and a half kilometers per second inertial. Past the kilometer per second in gravity losses. Fifteen seconds to first stage burnout. up just a little bit, and first stage burnout, separation, and ignition. And there we go. Now, unlike last time, it is the middle of the night this time, rather than shortly before dawn, so we're not getting any sun over the horizon. Very sad. Um, let's pitch up a bit more. Man, those solid motors look sort of like fins. It's kind of funny. Ah, uh, and that giant bulbous fairing on the nose. So... Passing the Carmen line, let's ditch the giant fairing. And look at how slowly that leaves. Because we're not accelerating very fast. We're a bit over 1G. up a bit more. Still on target. Interesting. Looks like not going to be as high a... Uh, initial apogee as I thought. Maybe I didn't pitch up enough. I guess we'll have to pitch up a bit more. Because that'll pro that would leave us at like 160, probably. I want to be at least 180 don't want to have the problem I had last episode where I went, you know, over the horizon from all the ground stations. Um, or the problem I had last episode where I targeted the dish at the commsat and forgot that you don't get a cone when targeting craft, you only get a cone when targeting planets. We have a failure? No, I just... Just a different ascent. Interesting. Alright, we're gonna have to build up some steering losses to get a high enough apogee. 
Yeah, when it, when you're doing a night launch, it's really kind of just the numbers and a bright flare, and that's about it. Don't get pretty visuals other than the star field and maybe some of the city lights. Okay, so we're trading steering losses for a higher apogee. And let's come right a little bit. Reduce our relative inclination. I know I said I wasn't going to care, but... Okay, now we have to pitch down so our time to apogee doesn't rise too much. We've almost got the apogee we want. Whoa! No, we want zero, not twenty. That was odd. Alright. Coming up on burnout of the second stage, we're going to ignite the third stage to finish the burn to orbit. couple, and how long are we actually going to have to burn this? Um, kilometer per second or so. So I think we might as well start now. Let's ullage a bit. Fire the engine. There we go. Uh, that, was a, that was not a correct choice. So we're not going to end up with a very circular orbit. That's a shame. We do have spare delta V, so burning with negative pitch is not the worst thing in the world. We also have spare relight, so I could just coast some. But... I'd rather not. pitch down even more. nominal. Alright. That is not a... T well, it actually is a quite circular orbit. The eccentricity is 0 0.002. But it's not as circular an orbit as I would like. Uh, my pride took a hit. Um, so we have 4.7 kilometers per second delta V. Um, that's like a full kilometer per second more than we need for this Venus transfer. So let's look out. Oh, and we are still getting our connection lines. Okay, so we've got connection to Bermuda. And then we'll get from the Canaries. So let's see. Oops. No, I wanted to zoom out, not switch map view. Uh, Da, 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 da. Venus. Where are you, Venus? There's Venus. Set as target. Advanced transfer to another planet. Pork chop. Alright, let's zoom out. All right. Create node. 
Okay, we are actually are in pretty good alignment. The note is only in 13 minutes. Where does that put the node? That puts the node exactly where we had problems last time, because of course it does. Oh, no, actually it's much closer to, to the ground station in Nigeria, so we will have signal. That's, that's nice. I like that. All right, so let's align with the node. And this one we can let MechJib do. Uh, while I'm here, however... Well, we'll do it on the next flight. I was going to say, while we're in this parking orbit, I was going to let MechJib figure out when the next... Uh, window to Venus is and when the next window to Mercury is as well but why do we have no connection here we're like literally ugh well such is life and you'll note that we didn't actually have to ullage that engine uh, and presumably that's because the boil off rate was high enough and ducted out the nozzle that it was giving us enough positive acceleration to keep our propellant stable. So that is the upside of boil-off. The downside, of course, is that you lose some delta-v. The upside is that at least it's doing a little good for you. Okay, and we're going to set this to 15 in the perhaps naive hope that that is enough to make MechJeb cut out the engine early enough uh, that we'll finish on RCS, fine-tune on RCS, and not overshoot. We'll see how that goes. Now that we're in this position, I'm going to go ahead and... Activate our dish so I don't forget. Target it at Earth. The solar panels are getting 170 watts. That's pretty nice. That's going to take care of most of both both things, I believe. Also, I'm going to move this up here and move this up here so that I'm more likely to be able to actually uh, let's close that actually see those right-click things instead of them being through windows. Um, actually... I think I'll have better luck cutting it off manually. Maybe. We'll see. I have better luck cutting off orbital burns manually, that's for sure. Bingo. That was... Alright, so we overburned by 1.1 meters per second. Let's fix that. Okay. And we're back in connection again. How nice. Now, let's take a peek at what that has done for us. Do we have a Venus encounter? Uh, yes, we do. That worked well. That worked much better than last episode. Venus encounter. No? Okay. And... No... Just trying to burn RCS in any direction I possibly can. All right. So that looks like it's going to be about as good as it gets. So we'll have to do a fine-tune maneuver somewhere out halfway between here and Venus. 
Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and um, oh, I think that actually that's that's deeply annoying. Well, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think we'll not actually burn the retro solids because I fear that they might hit they might impinge on the solar panels. So we're just going to decouple normally. Now we'll go ahead here and set this to debris, which I forgot to do on my other upper stages. Um, right, now we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's check our Venus. Alright, that's held basically constant. So we're just going to do the whole SOI thing. That's going to be three days, 14 hours, and six minutes. Uh, now let's go ahead and launch Robin 2. Wow, that is a bright lake. Is that like... What lake is that, anyway? Um... Guess that's Lake Victoria? Anyway. Anyway, let's go ahead and launch number two. A day later. So, back to our old tricks again. Let's target the moon. Launch into plane of target. 23 hours, 50 minutes. That's, that's really pretty expected. Um, so, around we go. Lift-off thrust-weight ratio is actually depressingly about the same as it was before. This upper stage is really a bit too much for the LV as it stands. Alright. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 2 minutes, 1 minute. Down to 5x warp, or 10x warp, I mean. 5x is stock KSP. Okay, five seconds to engine light. And there we are. And off we go.
far, so good. Ah, at least that's not flickering this time. Man, that is... <laughs> As the saying goes, riding into the sky on a pillar of fire and math. 40 seconds for stage cutout. I have to say, rockets just look so much better proportioned when the everything's realistic. It's just, I mean, things stock just look so lopsided. It looks so weird. Um, anyway. 20 seconds, the first stage cutout. Slight pitch up before burnout, so we align with the prograde vector. Burnout, separation and ullage, ignition, and looks like a good light. Okay, pitch up a bit more. And we'll come right a little bit. Eighty five kilometers, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay, time to ditch the fairings. Bloop. Okay, now let's pull back to directly eastward. The inclination go down. I mean, again, I've I've talked so much about how it doesn't actually matter, and then my perfectionism won't let me <laughs> launch into <laughs> the plane of the moon with a high <laughs> relative inclination. But really, guys, it doesn't matter for interplanetary. Don't. You know, do what I say, not what I do. Okay, now we're going to pitch a bit above. A bit more. Still varying our pitch. We still have a minute 40 seconds, still burn out on this stage, 37 seconds. Ah, now, now things are reversed, so we can pitch down a little bit.
down a little bit more. Down a little bit more. Down a bunch more. We're basically keeping time to apogee more or less fixed where it is by varying pitch. I'm gonna have a lower parking orbit than last time, but that should still be okay, I think. Okay, incoming level. And pitch and yaw to the right of our orbit indicator, so that will lower inclination. And burnout, and staging, and ignition. Okay, let's go a bit more to the right. And pitch up a bit. up a bit more to stop time to apogee from going down so fast. Now it's going up. Pitch down. Now it's going up. We pitch down again. Alright. Now we, I think we can pitch down the whole way because we'll probably make the velocity we want in about 18 seconds. That's reasonable. Okay. That's circular enough. Um, so now we'll transfer to Venus. Set as target. And we're going to add an alarm. Raw time Venus 3520. No. 3525. And it's in one year, 202 days, 3 hours, 3530. Okay. That's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this close window here. Create the node. It's in 13 minutes. Okay, now we're getting ready to get a nearing dawn, so let's go down to the node. Execute that. And now we're on the side with the sun. And we're going to trust that this thing is still very stable. It is. That's good. That's good. Right. So off we go towards Venus.
good relight. About two minutes left. No, less, rather less than that. We only have a minute 44 on the stage. Yeah, so this is once again the problem with Stock's burn time calculation. It bases off assuming that current acceleration is fixed, but our stage acceleration goes anywhere from the current 2.3 up to 6.23 at burnout. So that is not the best assumption. Okay, we've burned. Oh, about half the delta V we need to, which is probably like three quarters of the burn time, given the variation in thrust weight ratio. Um, we're back in connection, so let's go ahead and activate. No. Here we are. Target Earth, so we don't forget. And I'll stand ready on the abort button, so to try to kill it when we're about have burned the correct amount rather than futzing with the tolerance um, and escape Okay, that appears to have been right about right. So let's see if RCS will help or hurt at all. No, we've overburned a little bit, so... All right. No, that will... All right, so it looks like we're not really doing much better than... Okay, let's try in this orientation. Now that's making it worse. This is making it better. Slowly. bottoming out around there. All right, now let's try radial. That is doing no good at all. All right, so we're once again going to have to do a course correction maneuver once we get out of Earth's sphere of influence, and we'll probably be about at the halfway point. We'll see. So once again, we'll put these in the top stage so we don't risk um, changing the velocity of that probe. Separation make this debris all right and we've got enough wattage that we don't have to worry about reorienting so we're just going to go ahead and add an SOI alarm 
So, let's go ahead and I think I'm going to save just in case. Let's go ahead and jump to Robin 1 because we're going to ride it out of the sphere of influence and then set up a fine-tune maneuver. Um, yeah, so let's kill this alarm. Um, are we getting positive electri electrical flow? I certainly hope so. Uh, 117 watts, I think that's enough. Okay, so... And let's just verify that our antenna is in fact targeting Earth. I'm pretty sure it is, but cause we just did that. Yes, Earth. Good. So, warpity warpity warp. Crap. Robin 2 is ex is exiting the sphere of influence. Wait a minute. This is bad. What happened to Robin 1? I thought I was I thought I jumped a ship for Robin 1. Oh dear. That's bad. Let's hope that Robin 1's trajectory is not utterly screwed. Add a fine tune. Oh, no, we need. Yeah. Where's fine tune? Okay, and that's. 13 meters per second. I think we can handle that. Mars FT. Alright, now let's find out what the heck happened to... There's Robin 1. Let's see if we switch to it. I really hope that didn't screw over our trajectory. I have a fear it might have. I mean... Happily... It did not. That's... That's... I like that. Create... Fine-tune node, 15.6. Uh, I'll allow it. Um, why did I call that Mars FT? It's Venus FT. Alright. Let's try this again. Robin 1, Venus FT. Okay. That that went better. Um, so now we just... It would be good to have our vehicle assembly building maybe doing something while we're waiting. It's 55 days to that. So let's head back to the Space Center. electrics in 105 days. We have 36 science. That's not enough to actually do anything. Um,
be really nice if you guys gave me a geostationary contract. That's what I'd like to do. But our reputation is high enough that we only get non-local stuff. Meteorological satellite platform. Okay. I mean, that's that's reasonable enough, but... Um, I think we'll just eat the 55 days. We don't have to... We don't have to do everything. So... Yep, yeah, let's just... Let's just get to Mercury. I mean, it is a opportunity cost loss. Um, we could, of course, be constructing a simple rocket to fulfill that contract, gain some money, gain more data on an engine, say the new H1 engine. Um, but, you know, this is a tutorial. I'm just trying to show how to do stuff rather than play an optimized campaign. Um... Okay, so we don't have a great deal of propellant left. Um, but it should be enough to change things if we really needed to. So, let's take a peek. Are we... Oh, we might... Robin 3. All right. That's fine. So we want to warp... Hmm. We can't click warp to. Uh, we also have the interesting issue of... Where's the sun? There's the sun. Okay, so... Right, because we... We will stay fixed, aligned with the fixed stars, as we orbit the sun. Um, that means that our solar panels will come out of alignment. Out of alignment. Um, I believe that we'll be okay. We'll just do a readjustment at some point. like here. Are we still, how closely are we aligned to the sun? Uh, close enough. Alright, let's check again here. Now how closely are we aligned with the sun? We're still getting quite a lot of energy flow. Alright. Now we're going to need to actually, I believe, turn a little bit so that we're, we align with the sun again. We're going to go locked so that we know what attitude the sun is. Interesting what that lens flare does. It's pretty, but it makes things disappear, apparently. Um, No, we're still actually pointed quite quite close on to the sun. That is interesting. But let's align even closer, shall we? OK. 
Okay. Okay, now we're nearing Mercury quite a bit more. I've remo removed the alarm. We're still in direct sunlight, that's fine. Now, let's look at, can we get an idea of which side of Mercury that periapsis is on? I th it's on the correct side of Mercury, good. So we don't have to worry about adjusting that. Okay, now we reorient one more time. Okay, oops, apologies for the beep. Um, okay, so we're now sun aligned again. Okay, now let's zoom in close again and see what's happening. Earth is there. Let's look at Mercury, see what our orbit... Okay, now it looks like our orbit is actually on the wrong side of Mercury for what we wanted. Because as it happens, Earth is over there. So... Is that right? I can't tell. We'll have to, we'll have to get a bit closer to see, I think, probably. All right. Now our encounter is only in 20 is less than a day away. So we know where Earth is. Earth is there. And sure enough, this is on the wrong side. So, we're going to have to correct again. Uh, let's see how expensive it will be to correct. Um, and we want radial 10 minus 70. I believe we'll still have that much delta V. I believe. While we're doing that, can we... Yes, we can. Uh, we're going to... Where is the Earth, anyway? Let's look. Alright. Yes, coming in above will be good for reception. So, yes, we'll do that. That is a fine maneuver. Um, let's align with this maneuver. It's fairly cheap, all things considered. of it. Watch our orbit slowly match the prediction. Okay, let's kill that. What is our... That is... That is ridiculously close for astrodynamics. Uh, we'll take it. Okay, so now we have to warp until we're 
in Mercury's sphere of influence. So let's go ahead and warp to here. Time warp completed. All right. Now, let's go back to here, and it's we have a connection. It's going off in that direction. Our Mercury periapsis is lined up such that we will have a connection throughout our transit. Great. So we're in space high. Let's do some science. Temperature scan, telemetry analysis, Geiger counter, gravity scan, micrometeorite detector, atmospheric pressure scan. Whole lot of science. And let's do one of these two biosamples. Observe, transmit, space high. All right, now let's watch the science points rack up. We're already up to 100. That was a gain of 70 science. Now we're up to 118, still transmitting. 136. Well, that's going to pay for a fair few nodes eventually, even 100 pointers. Excellent. 100%, we're up to 144. And that's it for space high, other than gravity scans over the lowlands. So let's warp and see if we get anything else. We're still aligned with the sun, which is good. So we'll get solar power throughout this. Uh, our periapsis is in an hour and a half, which tells you how fast we're going. We're going almost 14 kilometers per second. That gives you some idea of how hard it would be to capture into orbit at Mercury which is why the spacecraft that did it did a lot of gravity assists on the way. It's basically all lowlands. Midlands, finally, something new. We'll transmit the gravity scan. Warp some more. Varying between lowlands and midlands. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 we're in space just above. Did not notice. I hope I didn't miss the midlands. Lowlands. Okay, so we've got lowlands and midlands from from low space. And here's Mercury. We're getting quite close to it, as you can see. Coming in on the bright side of it too, which is nice. Not doesn't look like we'll get much beyond lowlands and midlands, but that's still a quite impressive haul. Unless we really get lucky. Surface relative, it's 14 kilometers per second. Orbital orbit uh, inertial, it's still 14 and a half kilometers per second. With Mercury slow rotation rate, it comes out about the same. Okay, it's just varying between lowlands and midlands. Ah, Planitia. We got another biome. Awesome. 
our vertical speed is already th three kilometers per second, despite only having gone up about 50 kilometers from our periapsis. I believe that gives you an idea of just how fast we're going. Yeah, if we'd had a second probe like this, we would have put one over like a pole and one along on this path um, to try to get different biomes for our flybys. But the other one was a failure. The Venus probes, we've got two of them on trajectory, so that should be fine. Still over Mercury's planitia. Back to lowlands. Ah, we already did mainlands. My finger automatically hit the three key <laughs> as soon as I saw the biome change. Midlands, lowlands, midlands. Midlands, still, lowlands. Man, it's just flipping back and forth. to warp a little bit just to speed this part up because it's now quite consistent. Okay, we're still in space low. I think it's 5,000 kilometers is the changeover. Yep. I'm pretty sure we got this. We did. Okay. So let's see if we can get something other than lowlands. Seems doubtful. There's a lot of lowlands to be over. And we're almost to escape. Okay, pretty sure we got this too. Oh no, we didn't. Excellent. We got one tiny little bit more science. And by tiny, I mean a fair amount of science. Okay, and we've escaped Mercury's sphere of influence, and we're back out. Let's not escape Mercury's sphere of influence. We got some science. And Mercury flyby, 152,000 funds, 240 reputation. That was a great success. So since there's really not much else to do with this, we're going to mark it as debris, so it doesn't clutter up our list. And so. Arsenide's contract system doesn't keep giving us, like, change this thing's orbit contracts, because it's in orbit around the sun, and it has maybe 150 meters per second delta V left. So, that was highly successful. We got the Space Center, and we should be able to unlock some nodes now. That gave us a lot of science. How much science do we have now? Quite a bit, I dare say. <laughs> yes, we have 578 science points. That's a lot. That was a quite lucrative mission. 
So electrics and improved stage combustion. So let's take a look at R&D. Electrics we know we've already bought and improved stage combustion we've already bought. Alright, so now let's figure out what else we can do. Well, I think fairly clearly we need second gen capsules so we can get mature capsules so we can get something other than the Mark 1 pod. Tragically, we don't have anything installed for this node. Um, normally, Gemini would be there. We also definitely want miniaturization because it gives us the ability to have the Ranger Block 3 core and then unlock landing, which gives us a really good satellite bus slash probe core. Uh, we're going to want heavy orbital rocketry at some point because of all the goodies it gives us, like uh, those aren't that important, but these, the Lunar Module Ascent Engine in particular, the Lunar Module Descent Engine, it throttles, it's for landing on the moon, that's important. The F1, the giant, giant largest single thrust uh, combustion and thrust chamber engine ever made. Uh, the advanced AJ-10, that's seriously useful, because again these have a bunch of ignitions, it's pressure fed. Yeah, so that's a useful note. We also probably need to consider getting Hydrolox, because Hydrolox is the bomb. Um, it's expensive as heck, but it's useful. Alright, improved electrics, also useful, gives us more solar panels and some good dishes. Uh, dishes that let us go to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, all the distant stuff. Advanced flight control gives us the Saturn instrument unit, gives us... Huh. wonder why that's there. Um, I thought we had that placed and priced. It gives us the advanced version of the one meter guidance unit, gives us the Apollo docking port, which we're really going to need for if we plan on doing docking that things can actually go through. Um, then we're also going to want advanced construction because it'll give us um, cryogenic tanks I believe. Also lets us have 10 meter diameter rock uh, tanks and fairings. So, let's try to figure out a hit list. Um, so, advanced stage combustion will give us some really good Carolox engines. That gives us the, the famed NK-33 and NK-43, and it gives us the RD-58 version of the upper stage that we have with, the, with a much longer burn time. Although I think by that point we will probably mostly be using Hydrolox for uppers. Um, heavy orbital rocketry we discussed. Probably not going to use the F-1. That's more power than I think we'll really need in most things. We can get by with either the E1, which is, uh, what is it? It's a f about 400,000 pound force engine. The F1 is about a one and a half million pound force engine. Um, like if we had five E1s at the base of a stage, that would be that would be more than Saturn 1B class. Um, yeah, NK-33 is about the same thrust range as that. Um, so, we're definitely going to want hydrolocks before too long, because that's what's going to make possible to send serious business payloads out to, you know, the outer planets, Jupiter and beyond. Um, it's what will... We could get by without it 
sending probes that can capture into Mars and Venus orbit or sending landers to those two planets, um, but it would help. Likewise, we probably would be able to put a capsule on a lunar flyby trajectory without hydrolocks, but we would have some issue sending something to do lunar orbit without hydrolocks. I mean, it's obviously possible, but you'd need, you'd probably need an, even a stripped down capsule. You would probably be right at the 800 ton pad limit without hydrolocks. Um, in fact, you might not be able to do that without hydrolocks in that pad limit uh, with this with, with this kind of capsule. Um, all right, but Let's figure out what we'll, we'll deal with next. So, uh, and we've also ignored mature solids, which, which give us some excellent new kick motors. The Altair 2, upgrade of the Altair we have. The Waxwing, which is rather more powerful, rather larger. Uh, almost double the size of the Altair 2, definitely double the size of the Altair that we're currently using. Um, very high specific impulse for a solid. Um, it's specific impulses in the range of the, the AJ-10 we were using before. Uh, and the Star-17, quite small, but nonetheless a fairly useful motor. Um, so, hard questions, hard questions. Uh, it also depends on what we want to do in the next episode, and the episodes after that. Um, we'll have two years to wait for our next window, and probably longer than that for the next Mars window. Um, that's going to, I think, mean that we're going to focus on the Earth and the Moon for the next couple of years. So that means that it's probably a good idea to get hydrolocks soon so we can start flight verifying that engine, maybe this engine too. Uh, this, is, this is a workhorse engine, I have to say. Um, or we could save up and get the J2 um, because the J2 is quite rather good um, and then you can get the J2S in the next node which is quite good quite good indeed and it's even cheaper than the actual engine um, does, however, cost a pretty penny to unlock, that's for sure. Um, and that would let us do some high thrust hydrolocks. Um, so I think probably what we're going to want first is miniaturization, because we really want this, this new probe core. Let me click things. There we go. Now it lets me click things. All right, that's an interesting bug. I'm not sure why it's having problems. Um, okay. Then we're also going to want landing because it will let us land on the moon. It actually has some landing legs. Okay, now we have 368 science. Next, we're going to want, I think, early hydrolocks. And we'll want the, these kick motors. And at this point, we. Now probably need to think about second gen capsules and mature capsules. But we won't have enough for it, so instead let's get heavy orbital rocketry. Because that will give us tier four, TL3, 
uh, RCS and one kilonewton thrusters. It will give us access to landing engine. Um, well, I don't know. Do we want that or do we want advanced construction and then we could get advanced stage combustion and stay with, with TL2? I think we might actually want to do that. Uh, we also can think about putting up the first space stations, although we will need certainly improved electrics before we put up a space station. We just won't have enough solars for it otherwise. Um, and we just don't have enough science for improved electrics right now. So let's go ahead and get heavy orbital rocketry. That has some upgrades for various stuff. And that about uses up our science. So now we have a bunch of KCT upgrades because we spent a lot of science, unlocked a bunch of nodes. Upgrades. So let's bring this in line. And let's buy a bunch more because we have a bunch of money now. And tech. Yep, now we've got quite a bunch queued up. Uh, so on that happy note, I think it's time to bring this episode to a close. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope it, it was helpful. I hope you learned something. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks and bye-bye. Because we know we're in the Venus window. So we're launching a day early. Um, because we're going to go ahead and launch the second probe um, a day later, because again, we are launching into the plane of the moon and we get only one window to the moon a day. Two seconds to ignition, one second, engine ignition, up we go. Let's fix our turn. That's all fine. Okay, pitch program is started. Not really sure why things are flickering at the moment. I apologize. Turn continuing. Got about a minute left on the first stage. Forty five seconds. It's almost a kilometer per second. Um, because our Mercury window was actually earlier than the Venus window we had previously designed for. 
So that is why there's this interesting uh, configuration of numbers. Um, so, any luck, we'll be on the pad shortly. There we go. So, this now is um, a fairly odd-looking rocket, but it will serve. It has this big bulbous fairing at the top um, because it has those giant solar panels because we're basically sending the same design to Mars. Uh, although, by the time the Mars window comes up, let's be real, we're probably going to have better technology anyway. Uh, tech uh, electrics were already partway there so we can get rid of these big solar panels. 110 days to electrics being done. Mars isn't an for another three quarters of a year. So, anyway, let's go ahead and target the moon so we can launch into the plane of the moon. Uh, and I'm also going to futz around with There we go. I think this means... I can never remember what icons do what. I'm actually kind of tempted to... Uh, yeah. Let's just not have lines for now. There are too many lines. Um, so we targeted the moon. So let's go ahead and launch into plane of target. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this Venus alarm because we know we're in the Venus window. So we're launching a day early. Um, because we're going to go ahead and launch the second probe um, a day later because again we are launching into the plane of the moon and we get only one window to the moon a day. Two seconds to end and we're going to trust that this thing is still very stable. It is. That's good. That's good. Right. So off we go towards Venus. Good relight. About two minutes left. No, less, rather less than that. We only have a minute 44 on the stage. Yeah, so this is once again the problem with Stock's burn time calculation. It bases off assuming that current acceleration is fixed, but our stage acceleration goes anywhere from the current 2.3 up to 6.23 at burnout. So that is not the best assumption. Okay, we've burned. Oh, about half the delta V we need to, which is probably like three quarters of the burn time, given the variation in thrust to weight ratio. Um, 
we're back in connection, so let's go ahead and activate. No. Here we are. Target Earth. So we don't forget. And I'll stand ready on the abort button, so to try to kill it when we're about have burned the correct amount. Rather than futzing with the tolerance. Um, and escape. Okay. Then once we get out of Earth's sphere of influence, and we'll probably be about at the halfway point, we'll see. So once again, we'll put these in the top stage so we don't risk um, changing the velocity of that probe. Separation. Make this debris. All right. And we've got enough wattage that we don't have to worry about reorienting, so we're just going to go ahead and add an SOI alarm. So let's go ahead and I think I'm going to save just in case. Let's go ahead and jump to Robin 1, because we're going to ride it out of the sphere of influence, and then set up a fine-tune maneuver. Um, yeah, so let's kill this alarm. Um, are we getting positive electri electrical flow? I certainly hope so. Uh, 117 watts? I think that's enough. Okay, so... And let's just verify that our antenna is in fact targeting Earth. I'm pretty sure it is, but... So we just did that. Yes, Earth. Good. So, warpity warpity warp. Crap. Robin 2 is ex is exiting the sphere of influence. Wait a minute. This is bad. What happened to Robin 1? I thought I was I thought I jumped to ship for Robin 1. Oh dear. That's bad. What you would want. Whoa, no, we want zero, not twenty. That was odd. Alright. Coming up on burnout of the second stage, we're gonna ignite the third stage to finish the burn to orbit. couple, and how long are we actually going to have to burn this? Um, kilometer per second or so, so I think we might as well start now. Let's ullage a bit, fire the engine, there we go. Ah, uh, that, that was not a correct choice. So we're not going to end up with a very circular orbit. That's a shame.
We do have spare delta V, so burning with negative pitch is not the worst thing in the world. We also have spare relights, so I could just coast some. But I'd rather not. Just pitch down even more. back more or less nominal. All right, that is not a, t well, it actually is a quite circular orbit. The ex eccentricity is 0 0.002, but it's not as circular an orbit as I would like. Uh, my pride took a hit. Um, so we have 4.7 kilometers per second. Delta V. Um, that's like a full kilometer per second more than we need for this Venus transfer. So let's look at. Oh, and we are still getting our connection lines. Okay, so we've got connection to Bermuda, and then we'll get from the Canaries. So let's see. Oops, no, I wanted to zoom out, not switch map view. Uh, I on a pillar of fire and math. 40 seconds, first stage cut out. I have to say, rockets just look so much better proportioned when the everything's realistic. It's just, I mean, things stock just look so lopsided. It's, it looks so weird. Um, anyway. 20 seconds, the first stage cutout. Okay, slight pitch up before burnout, so we align with the prograde vector. Burnout, separation and ullage, ignition. And looks like a good light. Okay. Pitch up a bit more. And we'll come right a little bit. Five kilometers, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay, time to. Ditch the fairings. Loop. Okay, now let's pull back to directly eastward. The inclination go down. I mean, again, I've I've talked so much about how it doesn't actually matter, and then my perfectionism won't let me <laughs> launch into <laughs> the plane of the moon with a high <laughs> relative inclination. But really, guys, it doesn't matter for interplanetary. Don't. You know, do what I say, not what I do. Okay, now we're going to pitch a bit above. A bit more than kind of just the numbers and a bright flare. That's about it. Don't get pretty visuals other than the star field and maybe some of the city lights.
Okay, so we're trading steering losses for a higher apogee. And let's come right a little bit. Reduce our relative inclination. I know I said I wasn't going to care, but... Okay, now we have to pitch down so our time to apogee doesn't rise too much. We've almost got the apogee we want. Whoa! No, we want zero, not twenty. That was odd. Alright. Coming up on burnout of the second stage, we're going to ignite the third stage to finish the burn to orbit. couple, and how long are we actually going to have to burn this? Um, kilometer per second or so. So I think we might as well start now. Let's ullage a bit. Fire the engine. There we go. Ah, uh, that, that was not a correct choice. So we're not going to end up with a very circular orbit. That's a shame. We do have spare delta V, so burning with negative pitch is not the worst thing in the world. We also have spare relights, so I could just coast some. But I'd rather not. pitch down even more. Right of our orbit indicator, so that will lower our inclination again. And burnout. And staging. And ignition. Okay, let's go a bit more to the right, and pitch up a bit. Pitch up a bit more to stop time to after G going down so fast. Now it's going up. Pitch down. Now it's going up. We pitch down again. Alright. Now we, I think we can pitch down the whole way, because we'll probably make the velocity we want in about 18 seconds. That's reasonable. Okay. That's circular enough. Um, so now we'll transfer to Venus. Set as target. And we're going to add an alarm. Raw time, Venus 3520, no, 3525. And it's in one year, 202 days, three hours, 3530. Okay, that's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this close window here.
create the node. It's in 13 minutes. Okay, now we're getting ready to get a nearing dawn. So we will stay fixed, aligned with the fixed stars as we orbit the sun. Um, that means that our solar panels will come out of alignment. Out of alignment. Um, I believe that we'll be okay. We'll just do a readjustment at some point. Like here. Are we still, how closely are we aligned to the sun? Uh, close enough. All right. Let's check again here. Now how closely are we aligned with the sun? We're still getting quite a lot of energy flow. All right. Now we're going to need to actually, I believe, turn a little bit so that we're, we align with the sun again. We're going to go locked so that we know what attitude the sun is. Interesting what that lens flare does. It's pretty, but it makes things disappear, apparently. Um, no, we're still actually pointed quite, quite close on to the sun. That is interesting. But let's align even closer, shall we? Okay. Okay, now we're nearing Mercury quite a bit more. I've remo removed the alarm. We're still in direct sunlight, that's fine. Now, let's look at can we get an idea of which side of Mercury that periapsis is on? I th it's on the correct side of Mercury. Good. So we don't have to worry about adjusting that. Okay, now we reorient one more time. So, back to our old tricks again. Let's target the moon. Launch into plane of target. 23 hours, 50 minutes. That's, that's really pretty expected. Um, so, around we go. Lift-off thrust-weight ratio is actually depressingly about the same as it was before. 
this upper stage is really a bit too much for the LV as it stands. All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 2 minutes, 1 minute. Down to 5x warp, or 10x warp, I mean. 5x is stock KSP. Okay. 5 seconds to engine light. And there we are. And off we go. still getting quite a lot of energy flow. All right. Now we're going to need to actually, I believe, turn a little bit so that we're we align with the sun again. We're going to go locked so that we know what attitude the sun is. Interesting what that lens flare does. It's pretty, but it makes things disappear, apparently. Um, no, we're still actually pointed quite, quite close on to the sun. That is interesting. But let's align even closer, shall we? Okay. Okay, now we're nearing Mercury quite a bit more. I've remo removed the alarm. We're still in direct sunlight, that's fine. Now, let's look at can we get an idea of which side of Mercury that periapsis is on? I th it's on the correct side of Mercury. Good. So we don't have to worry about adjusting that. Okay, now we reorient one more time. Apologies for the beep. Um, okay, so we're now sun aligned again. Okay, now let's zoom in close again and see what's happening. Earth is there. Let's look at Mercury, see what our orbit... Okay, now it looks like our orbit is actually on the... Midlands, lowlands, midlands... Midlands, still, lowlands... Man, it's just flipping back and forth. to warp a little bit just to speed this part up because it's now quite consistent. Okay, we're 
still in space low. I think it's 5,000 kilometers is the changeover. Yep. I'm pretty sure we got this. We did. Okay. So let's see if we can get something other than lowlands. Seems doubtful. There's a lot of lowlands to be over. And we're almost to escape. Pretty sure we got this too. Oh no, we didn't. Excellent. We got one tiny little bit more science. And by tiny, I mean a fair amount of science. Okay, and we've escaped Mercury's sphere of influence, and we're back out. Let's not escape Mercury's sphere of influence. We got some science. And Mercury flyby, 152,000 funds, 240 reputation. That was a great success. So since there's really not much else to do with this, Not, doesn't look like we'll get much beyond lowlands and midlands, but that's still a quite impressive haul. Unless we really get lucky. Surface relative, it's 14 kilometers per second. Orbital, orbit uh, inertial, it's still 14 and a half kilometers per second. With Mercury's slow rotation rate, it comes out about the same. Okay, it's just varying between lowlands and midlands. Ah, Planitia. We got another biome. Awesome. Our vertical speed is already th three kilometers per second, despite only having gone up about 50 kilometers from our periapsis. I believe that gives you an idea of just how fast we're going. Yeah, if we'd had a second probe like this, we would have put one over like a pole and one along on this path. Um, to try to get different biomes for our flybys. But the other one was a failure. The Venus probes, we've got two of them on trajectory, so that should be fine. Still over Mercury's Planitia. Back to lowlands. Ah, we already did midlands. My finger automatically hit the three key <laughs> as soon as I saw the biome change. Midlands, lowlands, midlands. Midlands still, lowlands. Man, it's just flipping back and forth. to warp a little bit just to speed this part up because it's now quite consistent. Let 
Midlands, finally, something new. We'll transmit the gravity scan. Warp some more. Varying between lowlands and midlands. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 we're in space just above. Did not notice. I hope I didn't miss the midlands. Okay. Lowlands. Okay, so we've got lowlands and midlands from from low space. And here's Mercury. We're getting quite close to it, as you can see. Coming in on the bright side of it too, which is nice. Not doesn't look like we'll get much beyond lowlands and midlands, but that's still a quite impressive haul. Unless we really get lucky. Surface relative, it's 14 kilometers per second. Orbital orbit uh, inertial, it's still 14 and a half kilometers per second. With Mercury's slow rotation rate, it comes out about the same. Okay, it's just varying between lowlands and midlands. Ah, Planitia. We got another biome. Awesome. Our vertical speed is already th three kilometers per second, despite only having gone up about 50 kilometers from our periapsis. I believe that gives you an idea of just how fast we're going. Yeah. can't click warp to. Uh, we also have the interesting issue of... Where's the sun? There's the sun. Okay, so... Right, because we we will stay fixed, aligned with the fixed stars as we orbit the sun. Um, that means that our solar panels will come out of alignment, out of alignment. Um, I believe that we'll be okay. We'll just do a readjustment at some point. like here. Are we still, how closely are we aligned to the sun? Uh, close enough. Alright, let's check again here. Now how closely are we aligned with the sun? We're still getting quite a lot of energy flow. Alright. Now we're going to need to actually, I believe, turn a little bit so that we're, we align with the sun again. We're going to go locked so that we know what attitude the sun is. Interesting what that lens flare does. It's 
pretty, but it makes things disappear, apparently. Um, no, we're still actually pointed quite, quite close on to the sun. That is interesting. But let's align even closer, shall we? Okay. Okay, now we're nearing Mercury quite a bit more. I've remo removed the alarm. far so good. Ah, at least that's not flickering this time. Man, that is... <laughs> as the saying goes, riding into the sky on a pillar of fire and math. 40 seconds to the first stage cut out. I have to say... Rockets just look so much better proportioned when the everything's realistic. It's just, I mean, things stock just look so lopsided. It's, it looks so weird. Um, anyway. 20 seconds, the first edge cutout. Slight pitch up before burnout, so we align with the prograde vector. Burnout, separation and ullage, ignition, and looks like a good light. Okay, pitch up a bit more. And we'll come right a little bit. Eighty five kilometers, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay, time to ditch the fairings. Loop. Okay, now let's pull back to directly eastward. The inclination go down. I mean, again, I've I've talked so much about how it doesn't actually matter, and then my perfectionism won't let me <laughs> launch into <laughs> the plane of the moon with a high. <laughs> side with the sun. And we're going to trust that this thing is still very stable. It is. That's good. That's good. Right. So off we go towards Venus. Good relight.
about two minutes left. No, less, rather less than that. We only have minute 44 on the stage. Yeah, so this is once again the problem with Stock's burn time calculation. It bases off assuming that current acceleration is fixed, but our stage acceleration goes anywhere from the current 2.3 up to 6.23 at burnout. So that is not the best assumption. Okay, we've burned oh about half the delta V we need to, which is probably like three quarters of the burn time, given the variation in thrust to weight ratio. Um, we're back in connection, so let's go ahead and activate. No, here we are. Target Earth, so we don't forget. And I'll stand ready on the abort button, so to try to kill it when we're about have burned the correct amount.